a piece of information that I wanted to share, but I didn't want to share it in that because I wanted John to, you know, not have to cut it out because I didn't know if he'd want it in there. But I actually saw something about the, you know, the red card, blue, uh, yellow card, and the green card uh, as it pertains to D and D. And somebody was talking about how, where that actually came from. And soccer. No. Um. So there is an overlap in two communities that both is funny and kind of doesn't make sense. Incoming TikTok fact. Yeah. So people who play TTRPGs, there's a lot of them who also happen to be in the kink community. You know what I mean by kink community? No, could you explain it? Yeah, people who are into BDSM and like all that other stuff. That's BDSM? Kinky stuff. (laughs) Yes, I I understand uh, what you mean. And, uh, you know, that's why the world should have paid more attention to us nerds growing up because... Wrong, there were layers. Kinky. There were layers. There are layers. So when I say dungeon master, you never know which one I'm headed for. But what I was getting for, <laughs> <laughs> but what I was getting at was that several, like way before people started using that in TP- TTRPGs, people used that in the kink community to say, I'm okay with what's happening. I'm okay, but I'm treading in areas where I'm not necessarily comfortable and hard stop. So yet the green, yellow, and red light. And so that started in the kink community, and there's so many people who overlap that they actually brought it over. And I didn't want to say that in the actual clip because he's going to put that on YouTube, but I just thought that was a really if cool If you think that shit ain't making it to YouTube, you okay. don't know me well, you at can, all. Well, I didn't want it to have to be. I wanted you to have the option to use it. But I thought that was, I saw that like two weeks ago. Somebody was talking about how in their group they have, you know, like a yellow card, a green card, and a red card, and you can use that to say when you're uncomfortable with something. And it came from... The kink community where they, you know, you know, green light is like, yeah, this is great. Yellow light's like, okay, I'm, I'm okay, but, you know. There's so many other crossover potentials here. There like, is a lot. There's the, there's the guy at the table that always hogs the role playing and does all the talking. We could bring in the ball gag. Yeah. See? <laughs> Tips for session zero. Ooh, session zero. So we've grown past the point where we just play with close friend circles and family. And now there's a thing called session zero that when you go into a game, you want to lay down some ground rules. Say this campaign might have violence. It might have sex. It might have this other thing. Are you okay with that? Yeah. So... Do either of y'all have some tips for running session zeros? I think what I like to do is I like to ask the players more questions than I spend time telling the players. That makes sense. Because mm-hmm. like I asked both the kids, and I'm getting back to that, that you know, I asked them like, well, what kind of things do you want to do in the game? Not just like their characters, like what kind of stuff do you want to do? Do you want to go in dungeons? Do you want to fight dragons? And it kind of gave me ideas of what they wanted to see out of the campaign so I could kind of try to gear things it's not fun if we're not going to hit some of the notes that you want. And so I think if you spend more of your session zero asking your players like what they want out of the game, you're going to be able to align yourself to a better played game. Yeah, I think the term session zero comes up a lot when we're talking about um, iffy or sensitive subjects, but it's it's bigger. It's that, much bigger. Right? I think the first one I was ever involved in, and to your point, you know, with their family game, we really, when we're playing with the home group, session zeros really aren't that needed anymore. We've played together long enough. We know where everybody's boundaries are. But like to your point, when you play with other folks, but the first one I was really involved in was that online game that started two years ago. And the first question out of the DM's mouth was, well, what do you enjoy more? Role playing, combat, or exploration? Pillars. Yeah. Um, and so we could all kind of, you know, well, I'm mostly combat, right? 50 50 combat and role play, right? And so that just started the discussion. So part of session zero is just what kind of game you want. And then in that, you can start talking about things. Well, you know, there's going to be some violence, some. How graphic are you comfortable with the descriptions of that violence? You know, you just want it to be like, okay, you hit him and he's dead, or would you like me to say your blade slices through the bone, muscle, and sinew, and his shoulder falls half off, yeah, spewing blood all over. The and the warrior picks up your bone and drinks the bone marrow. 
gross. Might have crossed, crossed the line there, just <laughs> We should have had a stream session zero. Yeah. Um, when we I, played Carrie, we talked before, like, on we were on Discord, we were on the true session zero, but we talked, and, you know, they were asking us, like, what kind of stuff are we not, do we have any triggers? Do we have any things that we really don't want to cross? And, you know, there are things that me as a person that I just don't want to be involved with in a game, but we as a group don't need that because you guys know where a lot of my lines are. And if there's a new line that we've never crossed and I'll be happy, like, Hey, I'm not, I don't want to do that. So we recently had to have a discussion similar to that, right? Or a mini session mm -hmm. zero for the upcoming Call of Cthulhu, Cthulhu by Gaslight mm -hmm. that we're going to do because there's a potential in the game for things to happen to children. Right. And so, you know, how comfortable are you with that? Make believe, but, you know, it can be a sensitive topic. So I went on uh, a couple of discords that I'm on and just asked for some advice for some people. And I got some real good advice. Uh, and not more than advice, like a link. Here, go yeah. check this out. It yeah. was from Todd Moon Mountains. Um, he said, have, you, have you heard about lines and veils? familiar with both of those words but i think i'm not sure I so, I so i went and looked at it and it was pretty good it was about how you can have a conversation in your session zero to figure out where people's lines are mm -hmm. and the lines are we don't cross right like the line could be we don't want any uh any violence to happen or any so, gore right? or any gore or it's a hard or, stop or, right absolutely not and veils are well, it's okay if that happens, but I prefer to happen off screen. Yeah, right? thinly so veiled it's, nuance. You know, enough is said so that you can imagine what happened, but we're not going to get into the nuts and bolts and the nitty gritty. Right. But you it's, may find a trail of blood rather than a body. Right. right. We did that in the haunting where you guys found a teddy bear that, you know, had like a child's name and was made in. Perfect example of a veil. Right. It implied violence to a child, but it didn't explicitly, you didn't find a child's mutilated body. Right. Yeah. Right. I like so, that. Lines yeah, and veils. Lines and veils. Really, really. It sounds like a source book, like extra. Like, have you, do you pick up the new book, Lines and Veils? <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it sound like it? Was it was an article or something, <laughs> but yeah, it does. Um, like the rogue archetype. But there's also going to, and one of the things I've seen recently is uh, X cards. Um, or sometimes people use colored cards, you know, uh, yellow or red. Um, basically, it's because you can't think of everything that might come up when you're in a session zero for a campaign that may run right. hundreds of sessions. So if something comes up that hasn't been discussed and it makes somebody feel uncomfortable, is there a way for them to express that I'm not cool with this, right? So the the X cards is a way to do it. Right? You can toss out the X cards. Says, Look, no, and right, and then the 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 group contract is the DM is going to like stop, cut that off right there. We'll move on to something else. I'll buy agreement, and everybody else is going to do it. Doesn't require. Uh, well, explain to me why you dropped that X card because this is nothing, you know. Yeah, well, I dropped an X card. Shut we up. move on and respect it. And then I imagine there ought to be a conversation between at least that player and the DM. So I can find where your line is and be sure right. that I and respect it. And it may be something that would be a group conversation, too. But yeah. so that in the moment, you don't feel like you are stuck in this role play thing where weird shit is happening at the table and, and you just wall wallow in discomfort. And, yeah. Because that ruins the game, so. I think that that's also a really good tool for players in a group sense that if, you know, if you're DMing for a whole group of us and we're constantly putting down these red cards or these X cards and you're constantly like still hitting all the same things and I'm looking around, I'm seeing my players constantly, my other players putting down cards. That's a point where I say, hey, the table has made it known. Why are you continuing to like that allows you to almost see like a group consensus of we are not OK with this and you continue like that's one of those like keeping the DM in check. Like, I know you've been warned that she's not okay with that. Why are you continuing to, she doesn't have to be in silence and just deal with it or they don't have to. I think that's actually a really nice, like you're being held accountable for your actions at that point, because I can see that somebody has called you on it and said, please don't do that. You know? 
I like that. Pretty cool. Yeah, I'd left an online game one time because a line had been crossed. Apparently, this per it was, he went very murder hobo ish, right? Um, killing people we had obviously just captured and could get the information out of, but but his character would do it. I hate well. it. And so he just like we're all sitting there with this guy we've got found, and he just runs a a sword through him, right? And then the first couple of times that happened, like, eh. um, and apparently, you know, he had discussed his character concept with the with the DM, and the DM was like, "Yeah, cool." But no discussion from the DM to the rest of the table. Right. Um, and several of us at the table in character would say stuff like, dude, totally unnecessary. You don't have to do that, you know, and didn't have and you just got to the point where I was like, No. Deuces. We're not having fun with this game. A lot easier to do on an online game, right? You just ghost the hell out of it. <laughs> ghost. Um tougher to do in a home game. But I think that that's why. It can still be done. Just every time the DM or GM calls, just be like, "No, nah, I got something until you to do deal, that day. Until you deal with your problem player, I'm not coming back. We would never run a game with overt racism. No. Right? Now, we play Call of Cthulhu set in the 1920s. There was racism in that, that era. I made the decision before ever playing it that I didn't need to talk to you guys. No. I was not going to portray any NPC overtly racist or even overtly racist. I just wasn't interested in it, right? Right. Now, that's part of the setting, and maybe there's some other stuff that goes along, and maybe we could talk about lines and veils there, but I wasn't going to be some shopkeeper who's like, you guys can't come in here, right? None of that was going to be in there. Um, sexual violence, sexual assault, never, ever going to be. Right. In one of my games, so I would never, as a DM, have to even bring that up in in a session zero, unless I was worried that I needed a to make player sure might that do the players would do it. So yeah, I guess I just talked myself out of. I'd never have to talk about it. Well, but you know your player group well enough. If you were playing with a new group where you don't know people, it might be good. You know, as a DM, you still are allowed to have lines that you don't want to cross. Just because you're running the story doesn't mean that you have to just bend to what we're okay with. Right. You know, you have things. So if I was playing with a group of whole new people, yeah, that would be a conversation you'd need to have because it's like, I understand you guys have your lines, but these are my lines. I'm not going to have you, you know, raping and pillaging and you're doing whatever, you know, you can't, I, that's a line for me, you know, and that's important. I think a lot of people think in session zero is a lot about what the players are comfortable with or what they want to do, but the DMs and the GMs have just as much stake there in that game the, the game has to be as much fun for them as well even if they're the one running it and not playing in it yeah and as a dm you have a little more control right i can so i can you. say i'm never gonna let I, none of my npcs i'm not gonna put into any of my games racism sexual assault or homophobia or whatever but if one of the people at the table started going that way as a dm you've got that gavel right? yeah you, know, nope. you can shut that stuff Stuff down pretty good, um, but I'm sure there'd be some awkward moments, which is all the more reason why you have session zeros, right? To try to avoid when those. And I know a lot of people are like, "Why would you have a session zero? Like it's stupid. Why would you do that? It's a lot better than two weeks in having no game because you didn't talk to people, you didn't find out what they were looking for in a game, you didn't find out what they were not looking for in a game, and a lot of the times, especially online, it is easier to just book it. So it saves you a lot of trouble in the end. Yeah. You'd rather do it and not need it than need it and not do it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who say, you know, that, well, why would you even have a system zero? It's because they're usually the people who are like, well, I don't care about your triggers, you know. Yeah. Snowflakes. But I always found that argument to be kind of stupid because it's like, I remember growing up and being told, now you can't say fuck around grandma. Like... <laughs> Because it's a trigger for grandma. Lines and veils, baby. Lines and veils. So I spend most of Line my Line is, you cannot say, fuck around grandma. Veil is, you may say the phrase F word <laughs> around grandma. And as an adult, I have chosen to ignore that. And she doesn't care. But you get what I'm saying? Like, you grow up with people, like, explaining to you what's appropriate and inappropriate to talk around certain people. It's the same thing. Like, you just be a common, decent person. I think the more you know your, your group, 
the more it just becomes inherent in the way you guys play together. But every time you start a new campaign, it's a good idea to do it. If you're playing with a group that is new playing together, I think, I think it's, it's a required. Critical, critical, critical piece of it. And I guarantee you, you will never regret doing a session zero. Plus, I love session zero because they're fun. You get to be all hype about the game. Right. You build it. I, you build it into. Part of the fun, it's not just let's have a serious conversation. You can do it while we're rolling up characters, while That's, we're talking about that. the, you know, what Wild Mount is, and those kind of things. You I know. always think Session Zeroes are really fun. If it's not actually playing, you get to goof off. I do kind of wish I had had a more in-depth Session Zero before the Wild Mount campaign. You made a whole damn video. I did. It but was great. The whole time, you like you were it. saying, like I was thinking, we've all played together. I know them. I thought that my sister-in-law was a much bigger fan of role-playing. Turns out she's combat. One. Turned out she wanted <laughs> to knew? have a good she combat. Slashing gash. She got enough of the theater kid in her when she was in high school. She's okay with combat now. Yeah, PB, I'm going to be working on a way to have an X card in the Titan Effect stuff we're doing because I figured out how to add a deck of cards and Hell yeah. use them. As we we figured it out one time on Roll20 many years back. and we couldn't, couldn't get rid of the cards. Couldn't get rid of the cards. Couldn't get rid of the cards. <laughs> I've, I've got a handle on it. Okay, now. good. <laughs> this whole thing on TikTok where they're like, this girl invited me over for role play, and I showed up with my DMs, and I'm like, why are you naked, you Jezebel? Jezebel.